happy girl. Hello, friends, and welcome back to another podcast of Women at the Well Ministries, where we believe that all of us have to come to Jesus like the woman at the well in John chapter 4. Our highest priority is making God real in your life. Whether you are listening in our app, in your favorite podcasting app, or on our website at watwm.org, we invite you to sit down with us as we look to the scriptures to learn more about God and to strengthen your daily walk with Jesus Christ. Living her life for Christ, she's a happy girl. Today, as we journey through the scriptures, gleaning the truth from God's holy word, we're going to examine God's command to be of good courage. Joshua 1 9 says, Have not I commanded thee? Be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee whithersoever thou goest. Join Kim in this podcast of Women at the Well Ministries as Kim reveals several truths in Joshua 1.9 that God is giving every believer. These truths are given to us so that every born-again believer might live the abundant life God promises us in John 10.10. Hello, and thank you for joining us in this podcast of Women at the Well Ministries as we begin to take a look at Joshua 1.9, which Erica read in your hearing, and I'm going to read again in just a moment. I want you to realize something. As we look at what Joshua is being told, he's being told this by God because Joshua has been chosen to succeed Moses. And that's a huge ask. That's a lot for Joshua to take in. And God is letting Joshua know that he's with him and that he's never going to leave him. And that because of his presence with him, he says this in Joshua 1.9, Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Because God is with Joshua, Joshua has everything he needs. And God is reminding Joshua of the things he's told him, of what the results are when God is with us. Now, I want you to pay close attention to the difference between God coming alongside Joshua and Joshua coming alongside God. Where God is, there is going to be protection and blessing and reward and peace and joy and comfort. And God has a plan for us. We're told that in Jeremiah 29, 11, that there's a plan for us to prosper us and to give us a hope. But if we're not where God wants us to be, if we're not living as God can bless us, then we're not going to experience the presence of God. God does not change his plans of how we should live and what we should be doing based on what we want or what we think is right. God is King of kings and Lord of lords. All things were put under his feet, and therefore he is supreme. He's omnipotent. He's omniscient. He is God. And we must align our lives and align our steps with Jesus and the commandments of God. And then his presence goes before us and is with us. God is telling Joshua the plan for his life. And he's letting Joshua know when you follow my commandments, There's no need for you to be afraid. You need to feel strong and confident. You need to have good cheer and good courage. You don't need to be frustrated or confused. Simply follow. 
Now, as we begin to look at Joshua 1, 9, these are the five things that I think we learn from that verse. First, the truth we learn is that we learn that the Lord is always with us. When we are following the word of God, when we are in his will, we are in the center of where God wants us to be. He's with us. And when we step out in the horse weeds, he never leaves us nor forsakes us, according to Hebrews 13, 5. But we are no longer on the protected course that gets us to the intended, joyful, abundant life that God has promised us. No, we have taken the paintbrush from his hands, and we are painting our own picture. And the picture we paint will never be as good as the picture God painted for us and has intended for us to live in and through our lives. But sometimes that's a hard lesson to learn. And sometimes we do go left or right of what he wants. But 1 John 1, 9 tells us if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The truth is, God will let you go on the way you insist to go, but it will never be what God has intended you to do. And if you don't walk in the ways that God has planned for you, you will never live the abundant life he has for you. But immediately, when you confess, he forgives. When you repent, he forgives. And he moves you along this path of righteousness, of abundance, of joy and of peace. And Joshua 1.9 allows us to see what God has spoken to Joshua, and he's no respecter of persons. So the second truth we learn is that We are to be strong because the Lord is always with us. The third we learn is that we are to be courageous because the Lord is always with us. The fourth truth is we are not to be afraid because the Lord is always with us. And the last truth of Joshua 1, 9 that we learn is that we are not to be distressed because the Lord is always with us. Having the Lord's presence in our life, it's a game changer. And I bring to your remembrance the account in Scripture where where God uses the potter and the artisan who makes the pottery as a beautiful picture of God. God is our creator. And he never throws the clay away, just as a potter never throws the clay away, but molds and puts pressure here and pressure there and smooths out and and does what needs to be done. And, and, And the piece of clay is completely yielded to the direction of the potter's hand. And in doing so, this beautiful masterpiece is what is the finished product. And I believe Joshua 1, 9 is giving us a picture of God speaking to Joshua about here's what it's like to be in my presence. Here's what it's like to follow my commandments. Here's what it's like when you do what I ask you to do. And I'm the potter and you're the clay. And I will make sure that your finished product is beautiful. When we begin to look at these five things, these five truths that are being told to Joshua in Joshua 1, 9, it has to remind us of that verse that I spoke of earlier when we were talking about that he said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. He opens that verse of Hebrews thirteen five with let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. For I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. In fact, he's saying don't covet someone else's life. Don't covet someone else's belongings. Don't want what someone else has, but be joyous and content and peaceful and enthusiastically happy with that which I've given you because you have my presence. That alone is more than enough. See, God is reminding Joshua he's more than enough. He's telling Joshua, you can do the job because I've equipped you to do it. The writer of Hebrews is telling us that much like he told Joshua, that all of our circumstances in our life, we must embrace and we got to step out and walk boldly through. And we can't let it dictate our mood or our attitude 
And we must always remember that we're not alone. God has the situation and God has you. And whatever he's called you to do, whatever circumstance he's asking you to walk through, whatever obstacle that he's allowed to come into your life through nail-scarred hands, they've been sifted through those hands. And he said, I'm with you. This is what I want in your life because I have an expected end for this event. And I'm going to mold you and make you much like the potter molds and makes the clay into this beautiful peace. God has a plan. Don't ever lose that understanding in Jeremiah 29, 11, when he says that. There's a plan for you to prosper you, to give you a hope and an expected end. And he thinks about you and the thoughts are good. He has set you up to succeed. And he maintains his presence in your life. Just as God spoke to Joshua, he's speaking to each one of us. And he's telling us that he's with us, that we don't need to worry about the circumstances in our life. That we must remember that everything comes into our life. Because God has said, it's okay. We have to realize that we don't need to get in in a hurry. And God doesn't need our suggestions. And we don't need to take the paintbrush out of God's hand. But we need to align our lives and our heart and our mind with Jesus. We need to walk in step with him. And when we do, we will be where we're supposed to be. We'll be doing what we're supposed to do, and we will have everything we're supposed to have, and we will live in the abundant life that we are promised in John chapter 10. See, there's something to be said for Proverbs 3, 5 through 7, and Joshua is being told in this verse in Joshua 1, 9, what God is telling him are those five truths, and they all are summed up with The Lord is always with him. Therefore, he will be okay. He will be victorious. And so when we look at Proverbs 3, 5 through 7, it says this, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. When we purpose in our heart and our mind to follow after the Lord because we trust fully in him, and when we choose to acknowledge his presence in our life and to get his advice and his counsel, basically to get his guidance and his direction, and then we choose to purpose in our heart to follow that guidance and that leadership and that direction. It is then that we are victorious. And the Bible says in Romans that we are more than conquerors. He tells us that his grace is sufficient. He tells us he'll supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory. He explains to us that he will give us the strength to do that which he's asked us to do. But it all begins with trusting in him. And all of the things that God places in his holy word from Genesis to Revelations to teach us how to trust, to give us faith, to allow us to know what his expectations are, to encourage us and demonstrate how we are to pray and to ask him for all things. When we understand that he wasn't kidding in Jeremiah 33, 3, when he said, call unto me and I will answer thee. And show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. He tells us, call unto me. I'll tell you what you need to know. Now, I know there is a consequence to failing to obey. And I'm fully aware that when we don't employ Proverbs 3, 5 through 7, and we do things our own way, and we lean on our own understanding, that we can get ourselves in a mess. I alluded to that early in the beginning of this message. And when we sin, we bring negative consequences into our life. That's Galatians 6, 7, be not deceived. God is not mocked for whatsoever we sow, that shall we also reap. 
But I am more than confident that even when I'm stepping left or right of what he wants me to do, he is monitoring, controlling, and mitigating the obstacles in my life. Now, I can go beyond his will. I can go through his commandments. I can go over top of his directions and reap negative consequences. But I believe even when I do that, he is with me and he's trying to help me. But he's made it plain and he's made it clear that if we follow and trust in him and obey the words that he said and understand the value of what he told Joshua, that he is going to keep us in a perfect relationship with him. It only requires that we trust and obey. So whether or not you like the plan isn't the question. The question is, is the plan of God and is this where he's leading or not? Because make no mistake, we live in the world and the devil's running around and he's the prince of the power of the air and he's trying to kill, steal, and destroy each and every one of us. And so in 1 Peter 5, 8, we are warned to be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. And sometimes you're right. As we spoke a second ago, we do make obstacles and troubles of our own making. But regardless of whether it's a problem you've made, or it's part of God's divine plan for you to mold you and make you and what he would have you to be. The trial, the problem, the obstacle, whatever it is you're facing, it is your job, your responsibility to surrender it to him, to confess it, to lay it at his feet, to invite his presence in order to mitigate and give you the solution to restore your, sal- your peace and joy of your salvation. See, as I said before, all things are under his feet, and nothing is greater. Nothing is more powerful. Nothing that can can hurt us can come into our lives or intervene into our lives without first having been allowed to by God and his son, Jesus. He's monitoring and watching and managing all that's happening. He's still God, whether you acknowledge him or not. Our lives are watched and protected and guided by the Almighty God and His Son, Jesus. The devil's no match for that protection. Our God and the one true living God loves us. And there is simply nothing the devil can do to defeat you. You have to give him the victory. Because 1 John 4, 4 says, Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. The Holy Spirit inside of you, the third part of the Trinity is more powerful than anything the devil can give you. So if you're feeling defeat, it's because you've lost your focus. This is what's happening in Joshua 1.9. God is reminding Joshua who God is and that God is with him. Maybe today you just need a little reminder of who God is and that he's with you. If you're feeling defeated, it's because that focus is not in the right place. You believed a lie and you're no longer abiding under the shadow of the Almighty that we talk about in Psalms 91. You've stepped away from him either in neglect or disobedience. But one step towards him is all it takes to get back in fellowship. You've taken your eyes off of Jesus and you've started monitoring the storm. And looking around at the storm instead of being laser focused on Jesus and telling the storm just how big your God is. And today you need to start doing that. You are praying to the Lord and you can talk to him about the storm. But don't let the storm be the main event. Let God's intervention, his power, his love, his mercy, his grace be the main story of your event. You got to live in faith, walk in faith, talk in faith, demonstrate your faith, walk proudly in the calling God has upon you, and know that God's thinking about you and has a perfect plan for you. You got to believe he's thinking good things for you. 
No one will ever love you like Jesus. Scripture says, greater love hath no man than this, than a man would lay down his life for his friends. So regardless of what you're walking through, remember what it means to have Jesus and God in your life. If you're a born-again believer, you're not alone because he will never leave you nor forsake you. And he has an expectation of what this trial or obstacle or event that has found its way in your life, he has an expectation for what this will do for you. And if you submit yourself under the mighty hand of God, he will exalt you in due time, according to 1 Peter 5, 6. His work will complete you. You're not walking alone. You didn't haphazardly have this event happen. God is in control and he's still protecting. He's still watching and he's absolutely still monitoring because he never sleeps nor slumbers. And his eyes are always watching over you. So don't be afraid. Don't be distressed. Don't be intimidated. But be courageous regardless of the battle you're facing. Because the battle isn't yours. It belongs to the Lord. And he has carefully picked it out and purposely created you. So that this obstacle will not take you down is not bigger than you and certainly not more powerful than the God in you, but will be an instrument to bless him, honor him, and give him glory, perhaps to bless others, but definitely to help make you into who he intends you to be. So fight like David and say, thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts. In 1 Samuel 17, 45, David says, I come to you in the name of the Lord. We can do that because of the five lessons we learn in Joshua 1, 9. And because we realize in Hebrews 13, 5, that we too are never alone and that God is with us. So we can be courageous and we don't have to be afraid and there's no need to have distress. And his presence is always with us. We have the opportunity to live in peace because the one who monitors us, who guides us, who guards us, who loves us, who protects us, who watches over us, is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And he will deliver you out of every situation if only you trust in him and if only you believe in him. He'll deliver you from the mouths of lions like he did Daniel. He'll deliver you from seemingly impossible situations like he did the three Hebrew children, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that were thrown into the fiery furnace. God will deliver you. Scripture tells us in Jeremiah 20, 13, and ye shall seek me and find me when ye shall search for me with all your hearts. Revelations 3.20, he's standing at our heart's door and he's knocking and asking you to open up. Oh, my friend, we don't need to be afraid. We need to be of good courage. We need to be strong. We need to walk in the confidence of Almighty God because the battle's not ours. It belongs to the Lord. And regardless of the situation, God will deliver you. And in 2 Peter 2, 9, he reemphasizes that when he says, the Lord knows how to deliver the godly. Friends, your situation may seem hopeless to you, but hope has a name and his name is Jesus. And if you are born again believer, he lives within you and he's ever present in the life of a godly righteous believer. Remember, you are loved. Jesus loves you. Thank you for joining us in today's podcast. You can visit the show notes for quotes from today's podcast and scripture references. We pray today has been a blessing and we encourage you to reach out to us through our app, our website, or our Facebook page. 
You can find our app by searching for Woman at the Well Ministries in your app store or through our website at watwm.org. We're on Facebook at facebook.com slash watwm. If you visit our website, you'll be able to subscribe to Bible Bits, a daily devotion written by Kim and delivered Monday through Friday by text message. Woman at the Well Ministries is a nonprofit organization dedicated to serving our Heavenly Father. And it is through your loving and generous support that our ministry continues to bless others. To learn how to partner with Woman at the Well Ministries, please visit our website. Thank you to the gospel group Fudge Creek for letting us use their hit song, Happy Girl. We greatly appreciate your prayers. We are praying daily for our listeners. Remember that God loves you. You are loved. Happy girl